Father, help us to just really encourage one another and to uh, be there as brothers in arms and be warriors in your mighty kingdom, Lord. Give us a great time of just uh, sharing and understanding, and we love you, God. We give it all up in your holy and precious name and all God's brothers. Amen. Amen. I've been looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 today, verse 16, where basically it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And um, considering of everything going on, um, that's something I really got to take care of and, and really focus on. Um, Monday, about noon, um, I actually, Monday morning, my son, who'd been struggling with like flu-like symptoms all weekend, went to the ER wow. and came home about noon with COVID-19 diagnosis oh. along with pneumonia. Yeah. Oh, no. So we quarantined him and did all that good stuff. We thought we were doing anything right. And then today the county calls and lets us know that everybody in the house is now quarantined until the 21st. We can't leave. We can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. Mm. And I said, why are you doing this? Why are you sticking this in the house with that thing? You know, that seems counterproductive to make a stay, but that's their rules. So anyway, I was pretty peeved and I was very frustrated. And then I came across that verse and I said, you know what? God's in control of everything. I got to let God handle this. They started the quarantine back on the 7th. So we're already quarantined seven days according to them. We've only got seven more to go. And um, there were a few little challenges to get out of it, but God's met those and I just got to look back and say, I'm going to see how God works in this whole thing. So it's just frustrating when big brother comes down on you and they can't justify what they're doing, but they're doing it anyway. So, but God's still in control. That's where I got to be at. How's your son? How's everyone doing? None of us have flu like symptoms. None of us have anything that has anything resembling that only Matthew and he's fighting it hard. He's uh, fevers, chills, uh, like, he sleeps. This is a kid who stays up probably really late. He's going to bed at nine, getting up at ten thirty in the morning, taking naps at five in the afternoon for a couple hours. Oh, what's so, your name? Matthew. Matthew. Hey, Lauren, you want to pray Matthew real quick? Absolutely. And so, this God's will for us to pray. Absolutely. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Brother Jonathan, Lord. We thank you for his family. Um, we thank you for his son, Jonathan, Lord, and um, his son, Matthew, excuse me. Lord, we lift Matthew up to you tonight, and um, we just pray that your will would be done in his life, Lord. We pray that um, we pray that he, know, that he knows you, first of all, Lord. We pray that he's born again. And we pray that you would draw him closer to yourself during this time and that you would draw Jonathan's family closer to yourself during this time. We pray that they'd continue to submit to the governing authorities, Lord, like your word tells us to. We pray for physical healing um, in their family, Lord. We pray that you'd protect them in every way. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, he does know the Lord, and he's walking Praise pretty God. close. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah, he does. Sure. Yeah. Going back to your to your First Thessalonians five sixteen seventeen, it's it's so awesome because we don't have to try to guess what God's will is. You know, we all you know people always say, "What's God's will for me? What's God's will for me?" Well, he plainly he clearly tells us here what God's will is for us, and it's to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and to be thankful in all circumstances. That's God's will for us. Right. Exactly. It's pretty plain. Pretty plain. Anybody else have anything on this one before we move on? Something. It's it's something that I need to be reminded of right now, because I've been. Right right now I've been, kind of. I guess the word would be, discouraged or like, uh, another word for just losing motivation to. To do things right now, like oh man, I'm just sitting here at home. But I should be, I should be rejoicing with the re, uh, the joy in my heart that that God, uh, if I were to you know seek the Lord, make sure that I'm seeking the Lord, the joy in my heart that God gives me, that should motivate me to 
to give thanks and to do more around the house and and make sure to serve him and because there's so much there's so much I can be doing for Christ and for others. Yeah. Brother Freddie, what do you got for us? I'm just thinking about uh, the, uh, the verse that I've been meditating this week. And uh, I was sharing this with my team. You know, as, I, as you know, I, I have a team uh, on real estate. And, um, you know, it's really easy, Brother Brett, to get discouraged. And, you know, especially with everything that's going on right now, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, you get discouraged because you lose focus or you get discouraged because you see a lot of pain, a lot of suffering from people. Um, you know, like this week, um, I started calling people, you know, in my database, for example, in a very simple call, just calling, you know, like saying something like, hey, Ponzi, this is Freddie Rodriguez, thank you for setting up the call. And, you know, just calling you, just, just to, you know, just a courtesy call, just to see how you and your family are doing. That's kind of the call that I'm making. And this lady, um, you know, one of my past clients, uh, Godly people, you know, very nice people and everything. She said, Freddie, you call right in the you call right in the best time because she said, uh, my my son is about to go into a surgery and they uh, they they just diagnosed me with cancer and I need prayer. And um, you know, that moment honestly I just took probably like five seconds kinda of like to recoup myself, you know, as an outbreaking and I'm like, you know, I, I didn't have words to say. Uh, you know, I pretty much say, you know what, my, my heart aches with, with you and can I just pray for you? And uh, those are the things that, you know, especially today and day, we have to be encouraged by the word of God. And throughout this week, I was telling my team, right, you know, kind of like not just motivate them, but uh, inspire them. And, you know, because motivation, you know, there's a point that, okay, you can be excited and everything, but there are times that you don't, you don't want to move. So I was inspired and telling them, you know, this is the time that we can make a difference on people. And the verse that I that I was that I've, I've been meditating was um, uh, it's in Judges six twelve. I love this story because you know I, I like to see stories in the Bible with you know people like with issues, you know, that they were discouraging everything. God used them, and I think that this is the time for us, brothers. Uh, and for you, brother, Brad, as well, you know what I mean, to encourage one another as brothers and people that they don't, they don't have Jesus in their hearts. I mean, I cannot imagine, you know, how, how not just scary in a way, but how lonely it is not to know where you are. So obviously you probably know the story about Gideon when the Israelites, they departed from God and Midianites were chasing them and killing them and everything. But I can see a man that you know uh that it was kind of like me kind of like brad kind of like brother john uh jonathan you know uh each of us you know like kind of discouraging everything probably in the lows but his um verse 6 12 it says the angel of the lord appeared to him and said mighty hero the lord is with you and he answered back right you know sometimes we question god uh, not because we don't believe in him, but because sometimes, you know what, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, things don't really make any sense. Like, for you as well, you know, for you right now, Brother Jonathan, you know what, probably inside, you're like, why my son, right? You know, uh, you know, and, and, and the enemy try to attack us, right? You know, it's not that we don't trust God, you know, it's, it's the flesh. Sometimes, you know, the spirit get weak. And it says, you know, uh, Gideon answer back, sir. Um, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of the Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed, and handed us over the Midianites. And obviously, uh, verse 14 says, then the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites and I'm sending you. And it goes on and on, right? You know, but, you know, honestly, you can see God doing an amazing job, uh, you know, through him, through, through Gideon, but at the same time, it was God literally doing everything. And sometimes, you know what, so, something that I have learned is, you know what, I mean, we as men, we as humans, we can go so far. And there will be a point that we blindly have to trust God and uh, not just be motivated, but try to find some encouragement and the word of God that, 
we, we will believe even when we don't see it. Like I think it's uh, Hebrew 11, 6 says, right? The substance of faith is seeing things like, you know, seeing things like you, you, they're, already, they're already there. I'm paraphrasing probably the last part. But that's what, those are the times that we are right now, brothers. And, and we have to encourage that, you know, through Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, we're going we're gonna to go through it and, and trust 100% in the process. I don't, I don't understand some things, but that's pretty much what I have, you know, uh, especially for you, Brother Brad and, and Jonathan, you know, uh, these things are hard and everything, but I think it's a time that we can just pick up where, where we left it and just letting God do the rest, even though we don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that verse is Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the confidence of things hoped for and the substance of things on an assurance of the things unseen. And yeah, that, yeah, that, run, yeah, around there, I think it's 11, 1 or 11, 6, I'm not sure. Yeah, in that we, we have no choice, right? I mean, what, what do you think, Brother Ponzi? What do you think, brothers? I mean, there's a great scripture on First uh, Samuel chapter 30. I want to turn to that real quick. And this is kind of similar to that where, you, you know, King David comes back. He went to battle with this mighty man, and he comes back, and and his whole family, the whole town, was uh, taken over by by some I don't even know by by some other kind of, the Amalekites I think had come in and taken over um, King David's home and 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 his little city and took all the women, took all the children. So uh, verse three. 1 Samuel 30, verse 3 says, When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, and Ahinoam and from Jezreel, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk about stoning him. And then this last part, but David found strength in the Lord, his God. And, and kind of like Gideon, you know, um, it's, it's, it's times like this where we're, where we're in great distress, you know, some, some more than others. But we as believers have to find our strength in the Lord. It isn't our strength in ourselves. It isn't strength in in the government and isn't strength in, you know, in the, in the, in the woman, it's strength in the Lord. Amen. And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Go fall on our knees and we pray. Yeah. It's true. Good reminder, brother. It's true. Powerful. At the end of the day, I think that as long as we go back to God in every single way, like you just said, uh, Ponzi, right now, uh, surrounding ourselves to God, like literally, you know, it, it, it just brings, it, it just comes to my mind right now, you know, several times when, when the people of Israel, they, sur you know, they surrender themselves after their sins and everything, you know, literally changing the, their clothes with, um, you know, what, what was it? You know, uh, sacks and everything. That that show the humility that they were willing to go through. I think it in a, in a spiritual way, you know, that's everything that we can do at this point. You know, just keep. So uh, you know, just give everything that that we can, and at the end of the day, you know, trusting on God and everything that we're supposed to do. So, you know, because it's tough, you know, some of us, you know, um, I always say it this way, you know, some of us, we are stronger than other ones, but some of, some of us are weaker than other ones, the other ones. And, and, and I, I mean, to me, you know, first of all, I want to make a parenthesis point, so you know what, I don't know why you invited me to this meeting and everything, but it has been such a huge blessing to my life, let me tell you. I was actually thinking last night, for some reason that um, I don't know if it was a dream or something, but you told me, Freddie, you know what? You don't qualify anymore for the meeting. Oh, <laughs> so today yeah. I woke up. I woke up and I was like, "Hey, did this brother, you know, send me? We're gonna have a church. I mean, a uh, 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 
conversation, you know, um, you know, because I have another group as well that I meet every week. So it's been it's been such a blessing. So, anyways, you know, it's, it's this is the best thing that we could be doing right now, encouraging one another, you know, because uh, we all have the struggles that we go through, and and uh, you know, with 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 God's help and His spirit that Jesus did, we're gonna we're gonna come out stronger. Um, well, one of the passages that um that, that really relates to that that I that I've that's really hit me this week that relates to but David found his strength and and him you know that that quality of humility is um Matthew five three but blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. And I think that itself is a quality we need in order to to yeah. find, to be able to find our strength in the Lord. Because even in even in this circumstance, he's his. You know, David throughout all this is able to his the kingdom is his either way, and and he's um. He he's just full of humility. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I love the story. I I always refer to it when, whenever I think or you know it's, it's perfect timing because Jonathan starts with First Thessalonians, right? He tells us what God's will is. God's will for us is to rejoice, and that sounds really really easy when you're happy. Mm -hmm. you know? Um. And then Freddie brings up Gideon, you know, and, and, and they're going through oppression. And then God wants to call him to come and defend the country, you know. And then here, King David. I love the story because King David, his whole family, his whole town got kidnapped. And, and his whole town got burnt up. And if that's not enough, now his own men, his friends, are talking about stoning him. So he has nobody he doesn't have anybody he can he can turn around to and just talk and just vent, none of that stuff. And I love that last part of you know verse six says, "But David found strength in the Lord, his God." And there's times where you know where I, where I start feeling down or something, or something doesn't go right at home, or I'm having an issue with my wife, or treatment, and then I start I start to feel down and stuff. And then I, I think of these kind of stories, and I think, dude, your house didn't burn down. Your, your wife and your children didn't get kidnapped. Your friends are not trying to stone you. How bad can it really be? You know what? Just rejoice in the Lord. It, it, these kind of scriptures encourage me, man, to, 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 you know, to lift myself up, you know, to be the bright side. <laughs> yeah, to, to, to do God's will. God's will is for us to rejoice. You know, he blesses with the fruit of the Spirit called joy. And um, that's the difference between believers and non-believers. You know, that we can find strength. In the world. We don't have to use a drug. We don't have to use alcohol. We don't have to use sex. I mean, we can come to the Lord and he fills us up. Amen. That's true. 100%. Corinthians chapter 13, verse. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. He's right before that. He was speaking about what love is. Um, and God is love. So childish ways I, I can see is you know child childless childish ways i see is you know i can see is a sin in a way um uh, behaving sinless in in a sin in a sinful manner and in an irresponsible manner and and so when um Yeah, I, I just see that um, God God wants us to put childless, stop thinking in such a childless manner and think think 
think like men and behave behave uh, the way we should and <clears throat> because um we we need to start being responsible for our own actions and that, that that's one of the things that i that's one of the things that i came across yesterday i don't know what you guys see about that or if you want to correct me about anything that i'm wrong about I think it has to do a lot with sin in a way, right? Because, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I hear this before from another brother who said, you know what, a lot of times we as men, he was giving an example that we as men, we, we drag a lot of times, you know what, the, the little boy uh, into an adult, an adult man that God wants you to be. And one of the examples that he was giving me, uh, you know, Joseph, the dreamer, right? You know, Joseph, you know, the, the, the dreamer in the Bible, uh -huh. how he used to dream and everything. And he used to believe in his dreams so much that, uh, you know, I mean, literally God, it, it was God will in a way, but that just shows us a lot of times, you know, what, that we stop dreaming because uh, of the things that have happened to our lives, you know, I mean, abuse physically, emotionally, in every single way. And a lot of times, you know, uh, we drag that little, that little boy in a way, you know, let's like just say someone scream at you, you know, you kind of act in a certain way as adults because you, you, it brings you back to those memories. So I think that, you know, it has to do a lot with seeing as well, but literally grow up to be a, a mature, mature man. I don't remember which, which one is the verse that, you know, I think, uh, uh, Paul was talking about not eating just milk. I'm not just drinking milk, but eating solid food. And we have to be courageous. We have to have a spirit that is bold, not be afraid of anything, not act like a kid in, in that sense, not, not act like a child in that sense. You know, be afraid of anything because we believe in a in a in a great God. At the end of the day, you know. We know that if we live, we live for Christ. If we die, we die for Christ. So there, therefore, there is no, there is no losing either way. There's a, um, there's a parallel passage to that about putting childish ways behind you to piggyback on what Brother Freddie was talking about in uh, Hebrews chapter 5, starting in verse 11. That's Hebrews 5, uh, verse 11. So the writer of Hebrews at the beginning of this chapter was explaining um, the high priesthood of Jesus Christ and in the, in the first 10 verses and then when he gets to verse 11 he writes there is much more we would like to say about this but is, it is difficult to explain especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others instead you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food are, are, is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So discernment, right? Mm -hmm. And then starting in verse six, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about <laughs> again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instruction about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And so, and so God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. No, but if I had to... If I had to um... To use that First Corinthians thirteen eleven and and kind of move it into a, into two thousand two thousand twenty, you know, and you know, once he became once he put childish things away and became a man. But putting my putting childish things away in twenty twenty would be like I stopped playing video. Uh -huh. I went to work. Um, I don't talk like fifteen year old. You know, I don't go around playing things or or lit. Whatever, or whatever kids say today, because I'm a grown man, and I talk like a man. I take the things of God serious. And I, don't, 
not here to joke around about the Bible or make you laugh or entertain. Which all this thing you will. Notice what Jesus said to, about marriage. He said, "A man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife." Right? A man shall leave his father and his mother, not a boy. So one of the hardest things in life is to leave the nest of your parents. You know, the people that are taking care of you, the people that are fostering you, the people that are that are watching over you, putting a roof over your head. That's one of the hardest things in life to be able to leave that and create your own little nest. And now you're taking care of a family. You know, you're watching over children. You know, you're providing. You're the man. You're protecting. And that's just that's just maturity. You know, I can't sit around here 40 years old and 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 be childish and act like a child, you know? I know we're talking spiritually, but just, you know, just, just in, in, in terms of responsibility, I, what am I going to be? Just let my go? So I can follow my, oh, I always wanted to be an artist, so I'm going to move to, I'm, I'm going to move to Hollywood and just leave my, my family. How do you like it? How did you like it, Dad? You know what I mean? You like it. A man is responsible. Childish people are not responsible. You know, um, childish people are immature. Men are mature. <laughs> you know, um, men love. You know, uh, we're, Jesus is telling you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then the childish people, they can have a girlfriend, girlfriend after girlfriend, girlfriend after girlfriend. You know what? Uh, we're learning we love because before that he's talking about the love right chapter 13. um i don't know i just think childish um childish things are, are foolish things what do we spend our times doing you know um i i, I agree brother you know i think that childish things will be things that we normally struggle you know that we know that is bad it could be it could be drugs it could be alcohol it could be pornography all those things that we know that we wouldn't do it in front of god because we'll be childish we wouldn't do it in front of uh, our own kids because we know that it will be childish i think that um it can be in every single way right you know but i think that the biggest one is growing spiritually being the man the mighty man that god called you know this you know for example the guy you know gideon you know i mean mighty man i mean that's us right there only if we are able to accept who are we um in god i was uh you know right now what i when i was when i'm listening to brother uh Ponzi, you know it just brings me back to i think it's ephesians 6 11 about the armor of God, right? You know, I mean, God um, has talked to me several times in that verse because, you know, when I feel spiritually discouraged in a way, I feel like, you know, probably uh, overwhelmed, stressed out, you know, it, it reminds me that um, I probably have put the, my armor down and it's probably dusted there and the enemy is attacking me and I just have my 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 armor on the side and we we're supposed to fight fight you know the the, the spiritual fight daily because the enemy is, is attacking us attacking our minds attacking us with with challenges economically in every single way and the only the only way for us to be focused is is literally knowing who are in god and the tools that we have otherwise you know, we, we, we get distracted. You know, like Brody Ponzi said, you know, I've been tempted to buy uh, a games. I don't, you know, I haven't gaming anything, you know, but I, I, you know, when I was little, I was addicted. I was, you know, literally that kid that used to have coins. And the first thing that he would do, he would go to the, you know, you know, those old, you know, games, you know, um, and I, 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 I just remember, you know, I couldn't have, I couldn't even have money. I was just so addicted. So I didn't, I, I always been very careful on that. Because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get distracted more than I'm already are. 
you know, because we all are distracted, you know, it could be even in our business, you know, I, I get distracted in my business. You know, sometimes I put way too much time or social media, <laughs> let's not even talk about that. So those things, those are things that, uh, that doesn't really allow us to, to grow uh, spiritually. And I think, uh, you know, we can break it down that it, it has to do more, uh, you know, spiritually in every single way, you know, to let that child grow and not let it, not let it, uh, not, not to act in, in those child, child's way, childish way. I think it's 611, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, it talks about the armor of God, right? Um, let me see, I'm using a very small uh, Bible. It's not actually mine, but let me see. So, okay, so uh, put on, put on all, put on all, and it's gonna say a little bit different than my my uh, Bible, but is it put all? all First, brother. Uh, uh, six eleven, uh, Ephesians six eleven. Can you start in verse ten? Yes, a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Beautiful, strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on all of of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all st strategies of the devil. So the devil is always trying to put strategies, traps on us, you know, I mean, there's beauty right in front of us to be distracted because he knows how to get us. Uh, but you know what, I think if we are in the spirit and everything, we, we're able to recognize that, that we can do better. It's just, but we are not fighting against the flesh and blood. Um, um, flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in, in, in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of, of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the, the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm, stand your ground, Put it on the belt of truth and be in the body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoe, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the from from the good news, so that you will be fulfilled, prepared. And in addition to all of this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fear arrows of the devil. Salvation <clears throat> as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I mean that's that's I think that's this this is pretty much the whole mm -hmm. the whole um I would say the whole secret, right? You know, literally put in the armor of God so we can be the mighty men, we can be Gideons, we can be Davids, right, you know, uh to regain the strength one more time and and literally, you know not just be just motivated, but encouraged to believe that, you know, God has everything under control and we can grow to be the men that we want to be. I'll leave it there. I'm going to make it a secret, though. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, guys, and, and just for the record, I'm not saying that playing video games is wrong. So by all means, you know, if, if, if you're a responsible person, hey, man, go at it. Play some I video. think I agree with you. I think that's the, key, that's the key. You know, if you don't know how to control it, in my case. That's right. But if, it's, but if it's taken away from your responsibility, no, I, I it, yeah, it's, uh, anything to excess is bad. Right. If you're playing video games more than you're in the Bible, that's the problem. But anything that way can be, I kind of made a list in my head when I was listening to you guys. Uh -huh. Um, boys are selfish. Men are selfless. Mm. Boys get in fights. Men go to battle. Boys oogle women, men respect women. And it's up to men to teach. I've always been on the motto that you should always be a um, Timothy or a Paul or a Barnabas. And sometimes you're a, a Timothy learning from a Paul, but then you can turn into a Paul and teach a Timothy while you're learning from a Barnabas. And I think if we're always in that kind of community, and it doesn't matter an age. I'm not saying Barnabas has to be an older person. I think it has to be someone that's spiritually more mature than you. And so I think if you're in that kind of a system, it's really good for you. This, this group right here is really good because you hear a lot of different ideas from different guys. Mm -hmm. But I think that's when we're looking at men, men are responsible. 
there are a lot of boys out there, and I hear a lot of this from some of the ladies I deal with in a divorce care class. They're tired of these man boys. They don't want to raise them. Their mother should have done that job. They want men that will come out and make decisions. They want men that will step up and, and, and uh, stand in the gap. And they're tired of these boys who just want to work 40 hours and then can play video games all weekend or something like that. Or go off with their buddies all weekend or whatever. Not on video games again, but you know what I mean? And so <clears throat> women are looking for stand-up guys. And you know what? I mean, you know, we could all get Ponzi's wife on here and she tells he's a leader or not. Right. And I'm guessing he's a leader. But, I mean, she's looking for that. She's not looking for a boy that she has to raise, you know, so. Yeah, that's really that's, really that's really where I define immature. A childish ways is immature. And if all you're doing is going to church every Sunday and sitting in the pew and listening to the sermon and going home and doing nothing with your life, what are you doing to further the kingdom? Who are you discipling? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my two bets. Amen. That's what I wanted to know. I'm like, what? What is it that Paul wants us to know? You know, what the difference? What is it that he's trying to tell us? Grow up. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I've got quite the opposite today. I'm going to share about being like children. <laughs> Man, that one too. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. New King James Version. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them. Verse 3. And said, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted... And become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So according to Jesus in this, in, in this passage, what must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? Be like yourself. What's that? Be like children. He said, be, he said, be like, like, like children and be converted, right? And so I want to, that's great that we talked about the childish because Jesus doesn't want us to be childish. We know that because in the scriptures, Paul says he put childish things away. He wants us to be like children. And so the like question children. is, how are children? You know, so I've got, I mean, I've got a lot of ideas of how children are, but I, I, for one, probably the, the biggest one was to be humble. I think that's one of the greatest ones. And I just thought, you know, we were we were with my with went to my uh, my sister in laws yesterday, and they have a little toddler, and then they have an infant, uh, a little one year old. And I thought, you ever see a proud a proud toddler? You know, the toddler is not saying, "Hey, I can walk, and she can't. I'm better than she is." Or mm -hmm. I'm sure glad I'm sure glad I'm not like that like that like that baby. They can't even walk. Or hey, I'm already potty trained. I'm way better than they are. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff. You see, you, kids aren't just kids aren't like that. And yet we grow up and we become proud. Ain't nobody gonna tell us what to do. You know, it, when, when we're hurting, we got this. You know, we we, we don't need anybody's help. And in this case, these children are, he wants us to be like children, to humble them, to, to, that they, they humble themselves. And he wants us to be humble. And what's the opposite of humility? Pride. Pride, Pride. right? And I got this, I, I, got, I don't even know who, who, who said this, but this is a quote. It says, Pride is a sin that turned angels into devils. Mm -hmm. So think about that, you know, pride is the opposite of humility. And in order for us to get to heaven, he wants us to be like children, humble. You know, he gives grace to the humble. The other thing that was about children is that they're dependent. 
you know, they depend upon their mom for feeding, you know, so then they depend upon the dad for, for, for provision. You know, you, you never see a toddler that says, Hey mom, I don't need you to breastfeed me anymore. I got this, mm-hmm. you know, no, they depend on the parents. They depend on, on everyone to take care of them. And we're supposed to be the same way with God. You know, we are supposed to depend on God for everything, for salvation, for, for, uh, for wisdom, for, for everything in life. You know, we saw what King David did when, he, when, when everyone turned their backs on him. His family got taken away. Um, his town got burnt up. And his own buddies turned their back on him. Who does he depend on? God. And that's how we're supposed to be, like children dependent upon God. And mm-hmm. the, the other thing I love, I love about children is that they believe. They trust and believe. If you take a child and you tell a child about Santa Claus, they'll believe you. They'll believe that there really is a Santa Claus when there really isn't. They believe it so much that they'll leave milk and cookies out for this fake Santa to come and eat the stuff. And they believe. But for some reason, we grow up and we have such a hard time believing what Jesus says. Such as, Jesus says, that he is God. And then we, well, I'm not talking about we, but I'm talking about man, you know, man in general, will say, how can Jesus be God when he calls God Father? He says, our Father who art in heaven. How can the Son call the Father Father if he is God? You know, they make up all these things. They just can't believe it, you know? And, and the other thing is that we don't believe things that Jesus says, such as, I mean, I don't know, take, um, Take Jesus taking this child and telling this child, I created the heavens and the earth. Would this child question Jesus and say, wait a minute, Jesus, there has to be a a scientific explanation for this. They wouldn't do that, right? They would just believe Jesus at his word. And the last the last one that's so cool is if Jesus tells us that you and I, we are God's children, that you and I are justified, we're redeemed, we're sons of God, we're forgiven, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Um, man, he calls us saints. And for some reason, we have a hard time believing God's word. And we say, no, 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 no. I am a sinner. You know, and especially the, the, the popular one is I'm a sinner saved by grace. Wait a minute. I thought he forgave you. Maybe we were sinners saved by grace. But we're no longer sinners, are we? Because if I confess my sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Why do we have a hard time believing him when he tells us that? You know, children are not prejudiced. Children don't worry. Um, they're teachable. Um, they forgive, they forget. And so I end it with, you know, with what Jesus says, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So I want to believe what Jesus says, just like a child. And that's the Bible. Whatever the Bible says to me, I'm going to take that as word. Would you say that they are poor in spirit? They are poor in spirit. Yes. Yes. That, that's what came to mind, Brother Brett, when um, when Ponzi read this about um, being as a child or being like a child in order to, uh, to, to be saved. Um, I thought about how you brought up Matthew 5, 3, and, and I think it's 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So a child would be a great example of somebody who would be spiritually bankrupt. They have a need to be saved. They have a need to be like all those things that Ponzi went through. They have a need to be taken care of. Um, just that, that came to my mind. Give ourselves completely to, to Jesus and, and, you know, surrender, you know, Confess that. How do I explain that? That 
we can't we can't do it on our own like god i can't do this on my own i can't i just that 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 word that sentence itself god i can't do this on my own i'm i'm nothing without you i can't accomplish this goal i have in mind without you please please give me the strength to do this please bless me with the humility to do this and and bam and god god that's when that's when god that's when you become poor in spirit and god begins to um that's when you begin to grow uh, you know uh, what does it say you know i forgot what it is but the first the first will be last and the last will be first mm -hmm. There's a difference between being a child, I mean, being like a child, and being childish. Yeah. You know, regarding being being poor in spirit, um, every brother that you talk to who claims to be born again and who claims to, to be a follower of Jesus Christ, there should have been a point and it should be a continuing um, lifestyle of being poor in spirit. Um, sometimes you will you will talk to people who have never been poor in spirit. They've been affirmed by preachers or pastors or other friends and said, "Oh, you're good." You know, you raised your hand or you prayed the prayer or something like that. But when you look at the Word of God and you ask them, you know, um, "Are you poor in spirit?" Is there was there a point? where you were absolutely at rock bottom and you just had no other resources. Was there a point where you had to throw yourself on the mercy of God and ask for grace and did you surrender, you know, and sometimes people, they can't point to that. They can they all oh, know that, you know, that never happened, but, but I'm good. I was told I was good. And I mean, you have to, you have to point to the scriptures, right? So it has to, it has to fit with the word of God to be, to be the real thing, you know? So it should be continuous, but I think the poor in spirit that um, that Jesus is referring to in Matthew five three is is pe people people being saved, right? A poor in spirit that leads to salvation, being born again. But it should be continuous, and that's 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 what the humility is, of course. It's like after right after God has broken up all that soil. Yep. And you you decide to just okay God I'm I'm all yours. <laughs> I surrender. Yep. Brother Lauren, what do you got for us? Uh, Romans chapter five, starting in verse twenty. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, you know, if you just stop right there, I think it's really, um, I think a lot of people got, super grace or hyper grace or whatever you want to call it from this passage. Um, and I know some people, um, I think some people accused Paul of saying, um, you can see it earlier in Romans, but you can certainly see it from this passage that the argument would be, well, so what are you saying? The more we sin, the better it is. We just keep on sinning and then you just get more and more grace. So go to verse one in chapter six. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. And I think um, the New King James says, certainly not. King James says, God forbid, mm -hmm. to that question. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, 
we joined him in his death. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. And so it also, um, that passage a little bit, uh, just stopping right there, reminds me of 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Um, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. creation. Behold, the old is gone, the new has come. Mm -hmm. So if I'm saved by grace, then I can obey. And I can obey the word of God. I can obey the commandments of God. The grace that Paul is referring to is not a license to do whatever I want. There's a great saying by A.W. Tozer. He says, yeah. if we are not changed by grace, then we are not saved by grace. Amen. Amen. And the, other, the other scripture, I, I think it's James. Um, God gives grace to the humble, but he, he opposes the proud. But if I'm saved by grace, and I'm probably really humble because he gives grace to the humble. Right. If I'm walking around prideful, and that's a sure sign that I probably don't have grace. Right. Because remember, pride is a sin that turned angels into demons. Right. So do you think if I'm prideful, I'm going to be in heaven? No. Yeah, it's, it's so we ought to take heed to pride. This is, um, you know, Jesus, who is Jesus. Jesus, our Lord, our God, our Savior. He humbles himself. And he washes the feet of his disciples. Can you imagine the CEO of a company serving his people? It's just unheard of. You know, Jesus was the biggest example of that, right? You know, that's why he, everything that he did, everything is uh, kind of like directed to him how we're supposed to be in every single way. Right. Brother Freddie, you want to close us up in prayer? Sure, brother. Thank you. Dear Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us, Lord, to... Uh, get together, Lord, through this technology, Father. Uh, give us wisdom, Lord, that everything that we have talked today, Lord, that first of all, that we can apply it and that we can extend it and we can probably even learn even more, Father. Uh, take care of us, Lord. I ask you, Lord, for uh, brother, uh, uh, the, the brother that has his son sick, Lord. I forgot his name, Lord. But, uh, you know, you know, Lord, what you're doing, Father. We ask you, Lord, for excellent, 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 Lord, for his, for his, his son and uh, his entire family. And I ask you, Lord, to allow us, Lord, to, for us, each of us, Lord, to grow up, uh, to be the man that you want us to be, Lord, spiritually, especially, Lord, in every single way, Lord, that we can be more, more, more sensitive to your word, that we can be humble, Lord, that we cannot allow pride to get in the way, that we can, uh, we are able to listen, Lord, to your word. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful um, time that we have had, brother, uh, with the brothers. And I ask you, Lord, to give us grace and favor in everything that we do, Lord. Protect us, Lord. Protect us from not seeing things, not hearing things, not doing things that, that dishonor you, Father. And we ask you everything, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right, brothers. Thank you so much. My brother Freddie, good to see you again. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.